All right, so we're sitting in the chapter one, section one. Uh, the class note here is science. So with that comes diss track. So of course, anyone who counters diss track is great for this quest. Um, I personally use Captain Infinity War with all his synergies. So I put as many debuffs on him every time I parry. Uh, we also got Luke Cage, Void, Quake, Torch, Invisible Woman. But I mean, most of the science champions, it seems. Um, plus other ones, obviously, Claire. Uh, I think the best part about Cavalier is the fact that you don't have to necessarily take advantage of the nodes to get through it. Um, so you can use anyone who can put uh, up to three debuffs on them at once and keep them up there reliably. Um, but basically, we have the King Groot boss here, and he has 300% attack, rich get richer, feat of vigilance, missing in action, and opportunist. And honestly, the only two that you really need to worry about here is uh, rich get richer and missing in action. So the missing in action one is, the, is actually the one that I didn't like the most, but as long as you have a champion that uh, that can knock them down reliably, you should be fine. And of course, rich get richer. If you have a power control champion, if you have doom, magic, anything like that. I actually ended up just using my Cap Infinity War uh, because whenever I parry, I'd put a bunch of debuffs on him and it would get rid of his fury buffs right away. So I could just parry heavy, play him like normal. Um, and it really wasn't too bad at all. But again, um, I'll probably use magic and doom on my next couple pads, uh, but he's a pretty easy fight as long as you understand how to fight this guy. Now there are some other counters. I think stealth suit's good as well. If you're worried about the falter, his slow mechanic does counter miss. So you should be able to be fine there. Of course, torch, if you have him on your team, as long as you're above 10 heat charges, you can also do the same thing. So there's a bunch of counters here. It's not that bad of a boss. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. All right, so this month, quest number two in chapter one is the mutant class node. And of course, with that comes biohazard. So Omega Red is still MVP here, or at least as far as I've seen, as long as he can counter the actual defender, should be fine. But honestly, anyone that can counter Biohazard is fine in here as well. Um, I used a good bit of Warlock myself. Uh, but here we are at the Bishop fight. Now, he has quite a few nodes on him, as you're gonna see here. We have 100% attack, um, aggression prowess, foresight, special delivery, limited immunity, and backup recovery. Um, now, because of the foresight node, the first thing that comes to my mind is Ghost. Um, so if you have Ghost, you should be able to get through this perfectly fine. If you bring Hood, uh, that'll take care of the backup recovery just in case he doesn't want to throw his specials. And of course, that also deals with limited immunity because for 25 seconds, you can't parry him or anything like that. Um, I ended up actually using Stark Enhanced Spider-Man. I spent the first 25 seconds building up my poise charges. And then from there, I've got a few intercepts in to get that big fat theory. Um, but overall, it was not a hard fight. As soon as backup recovery kicked in, I just made sure to get a parry and then heavy to drain his power and then just, you know, fight him like a normal bishop. So. That's who I used. Of course, there are other options here. I feel like Warlock would probably be good. Any kind of power uh, control champion uh, that can get off any kind of power control within 15 hits, of course, because special delivery can make that a little bit annoying. Uh, so Doom, I feel like Magic can probably do it as well if you play really carefully. Uh, but yeah, that is Bishop. So let's move on to the next one. All right, so chapter two, section one, we have the skill class node. So for this Nick Fury, uh, Black Widow Deadly Origins, Ronin, Blade, those are all of my favorite ones here because the Rapid Metabolism node actually gets you those three buffs super fast, so you can just plow your way through pretty easily here. But we have a Morningstar boss, and uh, she has 100% attack, Master of the Sword, Power Drain, Enhanced Special One, Langor? Lang Lang Langor? Langor? Buff Toggle, and Power Snack. So, this really isn't that bad of a boss. As long as you have someone that can handle Morningstar herself, you can play around the buff toggle pretty easily. Um, it's only a three second unstoppable, so you really don't have to worry about it. Now, I tried a couple of uh, unstoppable counters um, like Stealthy and She-Hulk, but the bleeds were pretty significant and they both died before I even got in like 20 hits. So I'm not sure they're gonna be super great for this, but uh, if you have a Human Torch or Quake, Ghost, I mean, anyone you would normally use for a Morningstar boss, you should be perfectly fine here. Uh, the only other thing you really need to be aware of is this Langor node, um, because when you empty out your power, you will take a bunch of damage. So just don't throw any specials or make sure you have plenty of power left over after a special and you'll be perfectly fine. And on to chapter two, section two, this is the tech class node and probably the most underwhelming of all the, the, the class nodes that are in here. Um, but basically, if you have any kind of tech champion that has an armor up buff, they can take full advantage of it. Otherwise, just use whoever you need to to get through the lanes. That way you can get to the boss here, which is Wasp. Now, Wasp has 100% attack, special one bias, enhanced shock, dulled, terminal velocity, shockingly brilliant, and limber. Now, Wasp is metal, so Red Mags works great here. Uh, just be aware of the Limber node that can definitely catch you off guard if you're not prepared for it. Um, other than that, any kind of uh, evade counter is great here, like Falcon or Elsa. 
Um, if you have a Crossbones by chance ranked up, um, he's actually great for this fight because not only can he deal with the evades, he has class advantage, but he can also deal with this terminal velocity node, which ended up being probably the most annoying of all of them. Um, I went in with Ghost at first, and honestly, I wasn't really expecting it to be that drastic, but by the time I got like 10 or 11 hits in, she was gaining so much power. So maybe if I had Hood on the team, I could just tank special threes, or maybe if I was running suicides or something, I would have been able to knock her out before it became a problem. But basically just be aware of the limber, be aware of the terminal velocity, and then just play Wasp like you normally would. And now to the fun part here, chapter three, this is where we meet the first of the new champions. Um, this is the cosmic class node, which with that comes the buffed up node. So obviously uh, Venom and Hyperion, Angela, Call of City, and they all work great. Uh, if you don't have a cosmic champ that can handle it, any champion, that has access to a bunch of buffs will be fine here. I actually use a lot of Reg Magneto for the first time, which was interesting. Uh, but once you get to the boss here, it is Jubilee. And she has 100% attack, special attack heal block, which is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. Whenever she throws a special attack, you will be heal blocked. Uh, there is also Rise of Power. Every time you knock her down, there'll be a four second timer while active. Each time the defender lands a hit or strikes into your block, they're gonna gain 50% of a bar of power. There's also under pressure, so uh, basically if you dash back twice, you're gonna get this disorient debuff on you, which can really screw things up because it can cause uh, parries to fail. If you're using ghosts, it can also cause her phase to fail. So really be careful of that. That can catch you off guard if you're not aware of that. But then there's also Footloose, which honestly these days isn't really that big a deal. If you have access to a slow debuff, you can counter that. And can we just take a second here to just appreciate this heavy attack? Outstanding. Now, honestly, you could probably use just about anyone here. This is actually a really straightforward fight. Uh, you already saw her special attacks and they are very easily avoidable. Um, the heavy attack is awesome, so don't get caught looking at that. It is kind of long, um, but it is an awesome heavy attack nonetheless. But yeah, this champion is super easy to fight. Um, so once you get her down, we'll be on to the next one. And here we are in section two of chapter three. This is the Mystic class node. So of course, Doom, Clairvoyant, Scarlet Witch, they absolutely wreck these paths that ultimately lead you to the boss which is Strife. Now he has 100% attack, power thief, sadist, now you see me, and performance anxiety. Now to understand how to counter this guy, you kinda need to know how he works, of course. So it's all based off of these telepathic charges that he has. If he has five or more of these charges, he will glance the next attack. And when he glances an attack, he has a chance to activate his telepathic cloak. And of course, you will be guaranteed to miss your next attacks. Now one way you can deal with this is to power drain, power lock, or power burn him that will keep the telepathic charges down so he won't go invisible but he can still activate his telepathic cloak after throwing the special one regardless of his telepathic charges so be aware of that as well of course anyone who counters mist can do this fight uh human torch is great for this uh obviously nick fury with enough tactical charges will be able to slay this guy also any champion with the hashtag psychic shielding can completely bypass his mist mechanic and would you look at that he's also metal so um red max and he's actually a villain tag as well. I haven't tried Blade with the Ghost Rider Synergy yet, but I'm assuming he'd probably work fine here as well. So all of that being said, honestly, I feel like this guy is really easy to take down. I used a bunch of different champions um, on both of the new champs that we have this month, and they were both pretty easy to play around and super easy to get down, which is great because uh, I, you know, I wasn't really looking forward to a super hard fight this month. But um, all in all, I think I'm more interested in Strife as far as getting him myself. He looks really fun. He's got some cool mechanics and some some, some potential damage that I really want to see um, in action. But that is going to do it for this one. Guys, if you like this video, let me know. Click that like button and click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Also, please let me know down in the comments who you used for these fights. I always like to see the different outcomes and see the different matchups that uh, obviously I did not get a chance to try out myself. So until the next time, guys, you have a good one, and I'll see y'all later.